All right, uh, maybe let's start. So let me introduce you first, and then you can go at it. So it's a pleasure to have uh, Xi'an Zhang uh, with us today. He's going to present about settling the sample complexity of online RL. And uh, Zihan is uh, currently a postdoc in the department of EC at the Princeton University, uh, working with Jason Lee. And before joining Princeton, he got his PhD from the Department of Automation, Tsinghua University. And before that, he was an undergraduate at the same university. And his interests are various machine learning uh, problems and uh, reinforcement learning mainly, and online learning. Zihang, uh, take it away. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Shaba. Uh, hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to introduce our work about uh, uh, a sample, co sample complexity of online reinforcement learning. Uh, this is the joint work with Yuxin and Jason and Simon. Uh, so today, I have many five parts. So the first, set, the, the first part is uh, about the basic basic settings, uh, which is uh, I believe most of, most of people here are familiar with this, with this setting. In this in this work, we focused on starting the final hardly MDPs. So uh, our problem modeled by final hardly MDPs, where there is a stat action space script S times script A and a transition kernel P, where each P S A H is in the uh, S dimensional simplex, and uh, we have a reward function R. So in this work, we assume that uh, the reward uh, in this, this talk, we assume that the reward RH of SA is known. So for simplicity, otherwise, it will, otherwise, otherwise, it will be a little bit complicated to make the derivations. So our second assumption is about the reward is uh, is that the total reward is bounded by H. Uh, total reward in each episode is bounded by H. So compared to another assumption, we are uh, assume each RH of each each RH of S is ranged in zero and one. This assumption is more general, so which is similar to, uh, uh, I think, uh, one of the previous work of about horizon free learning, where they assume the total reward in an episode is bounded by one instead of bounding each bounding the reward in each step by one. <coughs> so all right, now we have some basic. Conceptions uh, about the learning process that is the V function and Q function, which is a expectation of the cumulative reward starting from some state or state action pairs following some policy. Uh, and the optimal while and Q function and the Bellman equation. Uh, so the online, pro -learn online learning process is basically uh, a learner receives. And initial state as one k. Uh, sorry, there are in total capital k episodes. Uh, for each k equals to one, two from capital k, uh, to to capital k, uh, the learner receives the the initial state as one k, uh, according to some unknown distribution, and then it, it, it executes the policy pi k according to the history uh, trajectories and its learning algorithm. And the performance of the algorithm is measured by the regret in capital k rounds, which is the sum of the gap between the optimal while function. And that of the policy pi k the player executed. Uh, so now I'm going to introduce our main results. So in this work, our main contribution is that we prove a regret bound, uh, a regret bound of q tau o of squared uh, SEH cube k uh, for all k uh, larger than one, and combine this with the trivial upper bound of k h. We get the regret bound presented in theorem one. <coughs> so this is the first alt origin near optimal regret bound for the final horizon MDP problem. And with this uh, with this regret bound, we can obtain a sample complexity of Q O of S A H square times H minus epsilon or epsilon square for every epsilon in zero and H. Uh, this step is by a standard uh, reduction argument. But I want to mention that when epsilon is very close to edge, the things get a little bit, a, a little a slightly different uh, because people may expect uh, the complexity of S, SAH cube over epsilon square in most cases. Uh, 
But when epsilon is really close to h, for example, when epsilon equals to h, there is nothing you need to learn. So the sample, com sample, com sample complexity will be zero. Uh, uh, actually, in the range, when epsilon is larger than h over two, it's suffice to learn the first two times epsilon min minus h, uh, uh, sorry, two times h minus epsilon layers. And you can apply, um, you can apply theorem one to this two times h minus epsilon layers to get the desired policy, desired epsilon optimum policy. So here is a compare here is a table for related works. So there is a long series of work about, about this problem. Since all regardless in this table are symptotically optimal, we care about we, uh, we, uh, it's suffice to uh, focus on the second order term. So before our work, there are two best previous work. Uh, uh, for the second or term, the first work MVPO, which has similar, which have the same name of this work, but but the algorithm is slightly different. They achieved a, a second or term of s square e h. Uh, there is an there is an s factor gap uh, to the optimal second or, ter or the term. And another work UCBMQ uh, has achieved a, a, a second or term of s e h h two four. So there's this algorithm is uh. In high level, is more like the model free algorithms. It first computes some v and uh, then computes the empirical, empirical transition head p to uh, make the two random variables independent. Uh, but uh, as, as I remember, this algorithm is not free since it is not model free since it requires more space than O of SA. <coughs> uh, I will mention about these two, these two approaches, approaches later. Uh, uh, before introducing our techniques. So let me give a quick review of the MVP algorithm and uh, explain why we use this algorithm to analysis. So the MVP was first proposed uh, for horizon free RL. Where horizon free means that we want to eliminate uh, the, or, the all edge terms in the regret, all polynomial terms of edge in the regret bound uh, under some proper assumptions. Uh, uh, the original paper first achieved a regret bound of a Q to O of squared S E K plus S square A. And this is a, 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 an, important, an important contribution of this work is that it proposed a very simple but effective bonus function. So this is why we use this algorithm. So let me quickly review the structure of MAP. MAP is a model based algorithm and it Applies the uh, the basic model based backward planning. That is, uh, in each run, you collect the data to construct the empirical reward function and an empirical transition kernel, and then you use it to uh, compute the Q function and V function backward from the H layer uh, to the H minus one layer until the first layer, following the uh, optimistic planning. So here. Uh, the main point is uh, about the uh, uh, is about the choice of the fu bonus function b h of s a. Uh, in MVP, they give such a function. Uh, the the the, uh, the bonus function is presented presented as here. So I will make one one term about the uncertainty of the reward since we assume that the reward function is known in this in this talk. So there are two terms in the bonus function of MVP. The first term is a. Uh, uh, as the first term is related to the empirical variance, so which is also common in relative works, uh, and the second term is a uh, nice lower order term, sign, which is very easy to bond. So in the analysis, uh, in the analysis, uh, in the following analysis, we will simply omit this term. So uh, in MVP, the also prove a theorem about this function f p. Uh, have p v and n. Here p v denotes the inner product of the vector p and vector v. Uh, it is a variation for the inner product. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. So, uh, they have they, uh, the the uh show that uh, show that uh, this function f p v f of p v n is non-decreasing in each dimension of v as as 
But for every p in the s dimensional simplex and v with infinite norm and no larger than h and every n are every non negative uh, sorry every uh, positive integer n. So uh, the proof is based on some basic uh, calculus. So given this theorem, we can show that uh, the uh, Q function is, optim uh, is optimistic. So that the optimistic framework of uh, reinforcement learning could be applied. So the head direction here, the first line is by the, defi uh, it's by the definition, and the second, second inequality is by the fact, it's by the induction, uh, on uh, induction fact that v h plus one k is larger than v h plus one star. So the, the third is uh, the third line is still by the definition, and the, uh, the the last inequality is by the empirical uh, some empirical Bernstein inequality, uh, which the lemma I, I believe uh, sorry I, I forget the exact exact uh, uh, citation of this lemma, but it, it, <laughs> there exists some Bernstein. Uh, inequalities for this term, for instance, style uh, concentrated inequalities. So, uh, by the property above, we can decompose the regret of regret on the MVP in the following forms. So, here we have three terms. The first term is a, a bonus, a bonus sum of the bonus, it's a bonus term, and the second term is an error term, which is uh, due to the Difference between the empirical transition and the true transition, and the third term is some uh, some martingale terms, which is uh, which is easy to deal with. So we here focus on the first two terms. For the first terms, we can relate as, as I mentioned before, there are two terms in the bonus function, and uh, and it suffice to care about the first term, the variance related term. So it, we can bound this term by some of the variance, and then. It suffices to bound something like this, something like the, the, which is also an, uh, an error term, which is very similar to the uh, main term in this, this talk, uh, the T error. So the second term is the T error, which is uh, due to the difference between high P and P, and in and this is the most uh, this is the most difficult part of of uh, of our work and all, all for this problem. Uh, the main hardness is that the empirical transition property is not independent with the well function v h plus one. So uh, uh, we have to use some techniques to decouple them. So before our work, there are many two approaches for this term. So the first approach is decomposition. Uh, uh, as we see by the definition of T error, it's sufficient to deal with some term like uh, high P minus P uh, times V. And we can decompose V by as V equals to V star plus V minus V star. Over here, V star is the optimal value function. So because the value function is determined before everything, so it is independent of the empirical transition high P. So this term, uh, so we can bound the first term easily by an Bernstein style concentrating qualities. As for the second ter second term, it's a lower order term because as long as the learning process goes, uh, we will converge to V star. But the problem here is that the second the second order term leads to an actual squared S factor in the regard bond. And this is uh, why uh, the MVP algorithm can only, uh, uh, can only achieve a regard of squared S A K plus S squared A. S squared A. That, that is a plus, that is a a reason for the extra S factor. Now the second approach is more like a model-free approach. Uh, that is, uh, I don't like call it resampling. That is, given some vacuum, uh, you first compute some well function V, and then you apply new samples to compute, compute the empirical transition hat P. So in this, this mask, the empirical transition hat P is independent of V, by definition, and definitely, by definition, okay. But the problem here is the convergence rate is slow in the initial phase. Uh, the initial samples are wasted because once you compute the V, the samples before V, before you computing, before you determine uh, V is wasted. You cannot use these samples to estimate the P times V. So generally this, this algorithm, the, the regard bound of these algorithms have has a high order dependence on H. 
as as we see before, it was SE H two four. The best the best result uh, was SE H two four. Uh, so now I'm going to introduce our main technique to how to de decouple the T error term. So I want to first introduce uh, a notion of generative field version, which is also popular in com uh, in related related fields. So there is a field which uh, there is some work. There are some works studying uh, the R problem with a generative generative simulator, uh, which means that. Uh, we can query to a model to get to sample from each PSAH uh, by paying sample complexity one. And the performance of the algorithm is measured by how many samples you used to obtain an optimal, a near, a near optimal policy. So we assume now we have a gener uh, we have generator. Uh, sorry, we have a generator model. Uh, we sample k times according to PLSAH for each SCH triple. So now we, without loss of generative, we are, we can assume an order over square root s time over the square root s times square root a uh, from s one a one to s s a a s a. Now we assume that the sampling process goes as below. So we first sample s one a one h for k times, and then s two a two h for k times until we finish all the SA state action pairs. And then we do the same thing for the H minus one layer, and then to the H minus two layer until we finish it for all layers. So remember the order. Uh, the order over the state action space is not, not important, but the order over the horizon is, 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 really, ma uh, is really, really mattering. Sorry, uh, I'm not sure I get what these are. Uh... So what's the upper index? Uh, the upper uh, the upper index is a random order. So it's uh, since we will use some upper square root like SHK, you know, uh, uh, SHK without the bracket in the learning process. So I use the bracket to make a difference. So it is a random uh, order. Okay, so, so it could be arbitrary. Uh, yeah, got it. So you basically have, okay, just, you have SA random samples from what distribution, uniform distribution? Uh, so we have, or, or you, you randomly order the SA uh, pairs as like all the SA pairs are put in a random order. Okay. Yeah. Is that, is that right? Okay. Yeah, but this 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 is s s s s bracket i a bracket i is the order is not important, but we just want uh what we just need to uh, we need this order in the analysis so that we can construct the matinga. So we need a future version. So uh, that that means if you want to sample, you have to decide which sample goes first. Okay. And yeah, this is the, I mean. In high level, we actually we don't need the order uh, over the state action space, uh, but for the uh, to write the proof concretely, we have to define it. Sure. And right. okay, so I, I don't really understand the significance of the blue uh, bubbles, but uh, I guess you'll explain it on so the next can, slide. So you can see, you can think think it as a, a pool of the data set. So each blue bubble contains uh, consists of key samples from SAH. Okay, so each of the blue bubble is going to contain case samples. Case samples from the corresponding stage uh, because it's an inhomogeneous MDP. So for every stage, it's a different um, transition probabilities uh, and you have case samples. I see. Okay. So now yeah. I understand. Okay. So that's, that's the data. So it's like you're basically laying out the data in, in some way and you use a common ordering and you're gonna go backwards, like starting from uh, the last stage and then somehow going towards the first stage of, of the process. Okay. Right, okay. Thank you. thank you for the question to make it clear. I mean, it's right. Maybe just me, but okay, got it. Okay. Uh, uh, it might be a little bit, it might be a little bit confusing. 
to listeners. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> good. Yeah. I think. All right. I hope so. I want to emphasize. I want to emphasize that the online learning process could be simulated by such a generative model with key independent samples from each state action and horizon triples. So the process is just like below. You first generate key data points for each state action pair, state action and horizon, and then each time when this state action horizon is taken, choosing S prime according to the current data point of S A H, and then you move next on both sides. It means that in the online learning process, you transition the stats to S prime, and for the generative side, you discard the current point data point uh, of S S A H and move the pointer to the next data point of S A H. So you use, in this way, we can simulate an online learning process using such a generative model. So uh, next, I'll, I want to introduce why we need to in, uh, why we want to introduce such a generative federation. So recall, our target term has this form. It is an error term. Uh, has p minus p uh, times v h plus one. Okay, let, let's grab a D to denote the data set mentioned about the in total SEH uh, blue bubbles. Uh, the first observation is that the hat PHK minus PH is only determined by the count uh, NHK. The NHK you know, the, uh, is, a, is a, a naive count of the learning process, which is a, a count of SEH before the case episode. So here we assume D is fixed. So uh, the data has been drawn by unknown to the learner. So in this sense, the uh, empirical transition only depends on the count. And the uh, well function of the next layer, VH plus one, is determined by the empirical, pre uh, empirical uh, transition probability uh, after the H layer, which we denote, denoted as the head P uh, larger than H. This is by the Argos, by the model based Argos and the backward planning. So to write down formally, we let D be the whole data set and we can write the head P H K to be a function of the count and the data set, which we denote as, as P H. And also we can write the well function as uh, a function of the uh, count, or uh, the, the Sorry, the, a, a function of the count uh, after the H, the H layer and the data set D. Is that is that greater or smaller? Up to oh, you are working backwards, so it's like uh, up to yeah. in the sense that you're going from capital H. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, now okay, so you just introduced this this notation, so. This calligraphic D is uh, like whatever data exists in the blue bubbles, uh, yeah. all the data Super. from there. And yeah. then you're saying that the uh, empirical transition probability is at some stage age and uh, at some round K uh, can be computed uh, by using this data, obviously, and then the data that is being consumed uh, is is somehow it's like to the to the left to the left, right? Uh, and so, and and within a, a given bubble, it is like you just list all the data points and like, okay, this is how many I need of of these. Is that? Uh, the, yeah. Oh, what was the what was the importance of the random ordering of the? Uh, of the state action pairs. Uh, so you you mean this? You mean this this notation? No, like in the previous uh, slide, you were emphasizing that we are picking a random ordering over the state action pairs. Uh, this, and this side. Yeah, the with the blue bubbles. Yeah, like. Yeah. So what are we using this random ordering yet, or like I have to wait for that? Like it's not used, right? Uh, yeah, it, it might be. Uh, we have in total k times, but there are sometimes we. Uh, if the the final count n n h of cap, n h capital k is smaller than k, it is okay. We just leave this unused sample there. We don't do anything to that. 
So we uh, these samples are samples are drawn by un unknown to the learner. So it's, it corresponds okay. uh, yeah. co correspond to not drawing them. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But like, what's what's the deal with the random ordering that you have from here? <laughs> the ra random ordering over the state action pairs that like the second that sentence says Oshman order over SA. It's like it oh it doesn't have to be random. It's just like an arbitrary ordering. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I mean, it's I'm like sure. I misunderstood the word random. Oh, okay. It's, sorry, it's, like, uh, sorry, it's yeah. an arbitrary ordering. And you're uh, just listing them. Got it, got it. You so the, because you wanted to arrange it to set table. Sorry. It's like I totally okay. misunderstood. I, I actually have to say it's an arbitrary order. I just <laughs> sorry, it's just a, yeah. a arbitrary order. All right. So let's come back to this page. So this uh, uh, screw the p uh, p h uh, of n h k and the data set screw d. So we have we can write the amplitude trans amplitude transition as a function of the content of the data set. Yeah. So now know that the count nhk I say is a random variable depending on the depending on the online learning process, right? Yeah. Yeah, they are uh, it's a group of random variables. So yeah. now we want to uh, our high level initial our high level idea is to play some uniform, uh, play some uni bound over the choices of the random variable n capital N. So we now we now fix some constant, the lower case in, and, mm -hmm. and and plug lower case into the function square the pH and to find whether we can do the same concentration for a statistic, uh, uh, for static static values, the lower case in, instead of a random variable for deterministic value to see what we can do. So remember here, even for fixed lower case in here, because the data set is random. So the square root pH of NHK uh, and, and the square root D is still a random, random variable. And sure. also this term is a random variable. And, and in high level idea, we want to prove that these two random variables are mutually independent and we can perform some concentration inequalities. So uh, now uh, before we, uh, before we go before we go to the next stage, we uh, first reveal uh, the possibility to play a union bound argument for the count uh, capital N H K S A. So uh, immediate observation is that uh, the count is non decreasing in K. So the count is always non decreasing. It is a sum of some positive uh, uh, positive variables. Uh, and the second observation is that there are in total exponential of O S H uh, K possible choices for the count. So it is not hard to prove it, but now I just skip it. So uh, anyway, the choice of the count is uh, there are the, the possible choice the numbers of, the number of possible choice for the count N is very very large, so that it, we cannot play the union bound directly with the count N. If we do such things, we get a, a meaningless regret bound, which is even larger than kh. I would have said that it's more like the possible values is k to the power of s a h. Yeah, yeah. S a h squared. It, it is actually squared a uh, squared h squared k times squared s a k h. No, so I'm, I'm it, talking about the number of possible values. Yeah. Yeah, we so have the number two. of possible values for for this table. Oh uh, yeah. So oh, because the, there is an upper index k as well. Yeah, I yeah, see. We have to be from one to k, and into, for each k, uh, there are possibly uh, right, exponential right, right, right. yeah. choices, and we yeah. can right, right. Can, Got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this means that we cannot play the union bound directly accord, uh, directly with respect to the count and h. Mm -hmm. So now we turn to another popular choice of the in, in online learning, online reference learning, which is the doubling batch. So in the example above, the transition and the value function depends on the count n. The n uh, has too much choices. 
uh, now we we want to make a make it a, we want to make it simple make it more simple so uh the doubling in the doubling batch the data set of a stat action uh horizon triple is divided into consecutive batches so for the ice batch it consists of the two to the power of r minus one plus j uh, samples the here j ranges from one to to the to the power of i minus uh, i minus one and we now uh so in the page before we have not defined the exact form of the function screw p right so now we define the in the under the doubling batch framework we define the script right. the script p of sh to be the empirical corner of the log to z here z is a positive integer log to the batch of the uh, triple S A H. And simply we can define a random variable I, capital I, H, K, as the current uh, index of the batch of S A. So which is the log two, uh, the floor of log two of the H K S A. Uh, now we can write the empirical transition and the well function as a function of the profile and the data set. So by you know, under the doubling framework, right? Uh, and this is this is important is important to our uh, uh, to our arguments to decouple the two random variables. So here is a compar comparison between the count and the profile. So the count has a as said before has a large has a large number of possible wells, but it will be very good that the profile only have uh, only has at most exponential of Q tau O of SAH possible values. So it, because the count is not decreasing in K and the profile with the flow of log is also uh, non decreasing in K. Uh, here is a simple proof for this uh, for this cam. So basically we are proving that the error at most exponential of Q tau O of SAH choices for the profile. So that that's to be the uh, to be the set of all possible choices, all possible uh, all increasing sequences uh, in this space. So we're uh, we if we fix k i i h s a i h s a is a vector of s a h dimensions. It's a vector of s a h dimensions, which uh, each dimension takes integers, takes value from integers. Uh, from one to log two of k, and for each dimension, uh, the value of i is increasing in k, not decreasing in k. So, firstly, we have we can observe that observe, observe that there are at most s a h times log two of k different elements in this sequence. Since there are, uh, uh, since, since, since i k is not not is not decreasing in k, and there are the smallest you can you can you can imagine that the smallest element in this uh in the uh sm smallest element of i should be the all one vector, and the largest element should be the all log two k vector, so which is this this vector the 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 left bottom corner and the, this vector the right top corner. And square C, the elements in square C is roughly corresponds to an increasing path from this point to this point. Mm -hmm. So since it's, it, it uh, yeah, since the elements is not not decreasing, so we can roughly view it as a an increasing path. So we can bond this bond the number of such passes by this term to S E H to the power of S E H log dot two k. And so, by some basic combinatorics, we can bond the bond the bond the size of script C by this term. Uh, so here is a simple explanation of for the number of increasing passes. So we first define something called a strict increasing pass. That is a pass which moves one distance in each step from this point to this point and moves one distance uh, uh, in in each step by this two uh, definition. So there are in total, clearly there, there are in total at most SEH times log two of K minus one moves. And each move they have at most uh, SEH directions. So the number of 
uh, the number of all such passes is bounded by ACH uh, times log, oh, sorry, ACH to the power of ACH times log 2K. Uh, Can I have a question? Uh, so in the previous slide, you had the, uh, oh, OK. My slide looks different. Yeah, OK. So you have uh, this SAH uh, log 2K choose K plus SAH log 2 little k. Like, oh, sorry. It's, it, it should be big K. It should be capital K. It's half old. But how can you have, like, in, in the bottom number, something bigger than uh, on the top? That's weird. Like in this binomial coefficients. Uh, the, in the slide that you posted, it was just K. I think that something maybe happened to the slide. Oh uh, yeah, I have made some fun modif modifications this morning. So uh, where, where is this where is this term coming from? This binomial term. Uh, it's it's basically since since the, since there are uh, in total K elements. There are the most uh, there are in total K elements in in. in there are in total k vectors of SAH dimensions in an element of scribble C, right? So you can view the i vector as a uh, as one vector of SAH times k k dimension, and you can also view it's it as a uh, three vectors of SAH dimensions. So what are we choosing? What what are the k things uh, that we're choosing? There are so the, there are in total these much different elements. Okay. So it, it corresponds to choose n stop points. So we can uh, view the, uh, the uh, we'll suppose that I, I1, I, uh, when I1, right. I, I, I right. mean equals to one, k equals to one. I1 equals yeah. to I2, I3. So you, you have to choose where, where the increase happens. Is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah choose the place that increase happens. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Right. So it's like some basic combinator. So yeah. that is the number of x1 plus x2 plus x s a h times log 2k equals to k, where each okay. xi is non-negative. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. All right. So now let's come back to our target term. So this this part will be a slight. A little bit complicated. Now I will try to introduce each equation to my best. Uh, so here, the first line is by definition of the error term t error, and the second line is by the definition of the function script p. Since we have assumed that they, uh, we have def defined that uh, the empirical transition probability could be represent uh, could be represented like this. And so, also the one can I ask a question related to this? Yeah. So. You are actually changing the argotum, right? Which is going to use some kind of a doubling uh, argument, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, okay. And so so the way the argotum now works is that uh, it doesn't change the transition properties until uh, the number of observations for a given essay pair doubles or something like that. Uh, yeah, here, the, the capital I is to do a random arrival. So right, right. So that that's like uh, what stage of the doubling we are at. Uh, yeah, you you can find you can find you can find the the place of doubling happens uh, by the yeah. value of i. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so, it's effectively changing the argotum. Uh, yeah. Uh, you mean which one you so want? The, so the argotum is not the argotum that was shown at the beginning. Which is based on every sample, uh, you are refining the transition probabilities, and then you add bonuses, and then you do the backwards calculation, and then you go again. But it's uh, more like you do this, but the transition probabilities are only modified if the number of cons compared to the previous number of cons, like when the last time we changed the transition probabilities, doubled. Yeah, you might you might be right. It's, it's basically basically doing that that right. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right. So this line is by the definition. Kind of makes sense, yeah. Because uh, the statistics are changing slowly, so why would you want to to change yeah. the transitions before it becomes a significant change? 
Yeah. Okay. Got the it. Learning the, the learning process is simple doubling batches. Yeah. Yeah. Which is right. Right. A slight different. I uh, uh, I think I, I have uh, we we have mentioned in the paper we use we use uh, batches instead of the classical doubling. Uh, so I I think this these two things are not uh, are roughly the same <laughs> the same to me. <laughs> So the start. Uh, well, what 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 would be a batch? Like what what's the batch? Uh, what are you gonna explain it later? So batch here, batch is here. So so each time each time if we and the, the exact definition of the group P is provided here. The batch is here. So you can you can assume that the blue bubble of SAH is divided into roughly log two key batches. Right. Okay, but but to, to me that's the same thing as what I described. Okay, it's see. Okay, just a different name for it. Fine. All right. Okay. So, so the second line from the definition of squared p, and the third line uh, is by a rearrangement. It's simply we uh, we take since since the tag over this uh, the sum of this over this is exactly one, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, capital I H K have two B sum right. from J, and then there is only one J. It's hard that it, this this value equals to one, and this is uh, again by the uh, rearrangement. Right. So we sub extract S E H here, and we take all the uh, all the key H pairs such that S H uh, S H K and A H K equals to S A. So some rearrangement. So the purpose of doing such uh, derivation, uh, such uh, manipulations, is that we want to decouple the empirical uh, transition from the empirical value function. So mm -hmm. decouple this term from this term. We want to separate the, the, the two terms. So this term, the, and uh, note, note that this is the uh, only place. Uh, this is the only place uh, the J, the empirical pro transition property of the JS batch of SAH works. Mm -hmm. so it didn't. It 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 will not appear in any other places. Uh, okay. I mean, <laughs> look at the same page. Oh, oh, sorry. So now we now we want to try something uh, with a. Uh, uh, union bond, uh, starting with a uh, high level idea from union bond. So we fix some uh, lowercase i from the set uh, squared c, and define that the t error of i to be this term, which is roughly we replace the capital I with the lowercase i. Uh, we replace the capital I in the equation above with the lowercase i. And it is, and by definition we can have this term and that is a T arrow of capital I, that is a T arrow of the profile is exactly the error term T arrow. So and this definition, if we can bond T arrow of I for all I in script C, all lowercase I, all small I in script C, uh, we finish the bond for T arrow, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the first place we use the bond. Okay, now we give some analysis for the term T R of I. So the first observation is that since remember that the small i is fixed, so the only randomness comes from the uh, the learning process, then the the value of S E H and the K H and the data set D. So there are two parts. And for the that so randomness in data, data set D, we play the decouple arguments. And for the, for the uh, randomness in the uh, in the trajectory S H K and I H K, we play a union bound argument. So the first the observation is that uh, the value function of H plus one only deter, only de depends on the samples uh, after the H H H layer. So the samples of the H plus one layer to the final capital H layer. And the empirical the function uh, the empirical function squared p only depends on the data points of the H layer. So the dependence are separated. So now we we, we apply further a uh, uh, rearrangement by writing T R of i for like this term. Mm -hmm. So here I believe. 
uh, I need to explain the index K J L S H carefully. So, uh, here uh, K J L S H is a key such that the sum of this term, sum of this term for some fix, uh, we fix some S H and the sum this term reaches L. That is uh, roughly the L's with it. In, uh, you can understand it as, as the L's with it to the state action horizon triple S A H. Is it the first K? The uh, first the, K, the first yeah, time when this count is reached. The first L is the, the time that the trajectory with it L with it with, uh, with it S A H for the L's time. Yeah. 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 Got it. So, you should notice that the visit is determined by is not like the the number of counts in the online in the online pro learning process because here we we the profile we we use it uh, it's not profile it, yeah. it is a of some fixed index i prime so it is possible that uh, uh, the i prime is uh, uh, for example when i, I the, the lowercase i is always is always one for every hksa is always one so uh the so every every visit to seh is counted to the uh first batch right to the first batch of SA. but actually in the online learning process in the first batch you have you have at most one visit to this this direction horizon right, triple, right? Mm -hmm. so it, it, it should be know that and we have definition that if uh, if this the total sum is from one from k prime to one to k to capital K is no larger, I'm sorry, is smaller than L. We set this index to be infinity and said we, uh, uh sorry, so so and we said uh, when when this k k equals to infinity, we said v equals to zero. Uh, here is some is a typo. Uh, anyway, I think <laughs> so. Uh, now we finally can perform some concentrations. So, uh, as we studied before, for any vector in this set, it is independent from the, the this this error this uh, this gap the gap between uh, empirical transition and the true transition. So suppose that we choose SEH vectors from this set. Actually, choose we fix we fix some chosen from this set. And we can use some martingale uh, use, use some concentration equalities for martingale to obtain this result. So you did the basic variance uh, aware concentration for martingales. So I hope this this will be clear. So remember that we fix our choices of uh, uh, x as sah. So you can uh, think of x as sah equals to an index from one to uh, which ranges in one. To capital K. Uh, what is J here? J here. J is uh, not is the index of the batch. J is here. So we fix the J. Okay. We, we fix some J, and we okay. And it is like this. And that's the length of the batch. Uh yeah, two yeah. to the J, to the power of J minus one is the length of the batch. So here this term is so is best of the martingale, and you. This is the sum of the variance. Uh -huh. uh, this term, this term is the sum of the variance. And what is that a prime? Is that a unit bond happening here or something? Uh, this this line is basically the, the starting concentration qualities. And in the following, we are going to apply unit bond. Uni bond. We're going to play unit bond. So the first unit bound, uh, the second unit bound is coming from the all possible choices of uh, x, x of x s a h. Yeah, here it comes. Okay. okay. Remember, remember that each s of s a h has a most key plus one choice since it, it belongs to these vectors. Mm -hmm. As that, uh, so there are in total key plus one to the power of s a h choices for the this group of vectors, right? Doesn't it matter that this is a Okay, I, I guess uh, I guess in the, f the previous bond, yeah, you were allowing x to take values randomly, but you are effectively taking union bond over uh, 
the uh, possible uh, values of the it's, it's, it's i. Uh, uh, let, let me take an example. For example, so x is not random. I saw that x depends on the data and and the randomness. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's random. Yeah. It yeah, is it's like uh, it's decorated now based yeah. on fixing the counts and yeah. or like wh whatever, like this profile counts or something. And uh -oh. then you're just saying that the uh, like no apply a union bound over the profile counts or yeah, oh, that's, that's, it's that's like the cardinality. Like, what, how do we know that? Uh, like, what's the, what's the cardinality of this set that x takes values in? It's based on this profile count argument that we had that there are not so many we, of them, right? Up to now, we have have not played our, the play the unibound on for the yeah yeah. So there's a second inequality. Yeah. 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 No, no, in the I uh, I believe in the inequality in the next page, but I want to firstly to clarify this inequality. So I take example for the choice of uh, of uh, x of s s a h. For example, if we choose x. S A H equals to uh super V H plus one I two ones. Here we choose I two one for all every S A H. This is the choice, right? So we can also choose X S X of uh, S A H to be the second vector. So so it's uh, like the the free variable is k lowercase k there. Uh, uh yeah, I, I just want to step so the, that. So there are k plus one values for that. Yeah. So if we uh. If we choose this vector to be v uh, script vh uh, of i larger than h one uh, with k as one, and this inequality holds true holds trivially, right? It is the basic okay. uh, concentration inequality for nothing else. Actually, actually, it is concentration inequality for some independent random variables. Right. So because that before sampling of the h layer, all x a s a h is yeah. is fixed is is fixed is determined and. Yeah. And this this this, this empirical transition are uh, are waiting for drawn. Uh, nice. Yeah. So here is the first. Uh, maybe the first. I don't. I don't know the first or second. But anyway, it is a it is a unibound argument. It's a unibound argument. Uh, so remember that for all all possible choices of x x dash s a h, this inequality holds. So now we are going to use this this inequality to bound the term t error. So firstly, we know that this term, this term could be viewed as a, as an instance of this term. Uh, well, with a with, uh, by dividing both by the factor two to the power of g minus one. Okay, this term could be using the inequality above. We can bound this term by this term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and the next the next inequality is by the Cauchy inequality. So we simply play Cauchy inequality over L, over small L from summit from some Ls to the upper bound. The here the uh, uh, Lg of i is defined as a max maximum possible count with it to some SEH under the uh, constant the lowercase i and the trajectory as h k and h k. So we simply play the Cauchy's inequality, and this, uh, and, and in this step we also play a, re a rearrangement. This is about the, by the definition of the k l k j l s a h. Okay. Okay. Now we are almost finished. Uh -huh. So, so the next step is that now we are we are working for the fixed some fixed fixed small i in the set script c. Now we're going to play the union bound. Uh, union bound over all all possible values of a small small i in the set script c. I can get that with with probably one one step term for all i in script c. We can bound ti by this term. So here the union bound appears here. So we since 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 the log log one or dot prime appears here, it's supposed to add log the side log of the size of a size of c to the term b. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. So 
now we uh, the, the 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 last step is to plug the profile into this into this bond. So as a result, uh -huh. we have that the error t error of the capital I t error of the profile is bounded by this term. This is the, exactly the last equation, and now we have we have to provide a bond for the term. Uh, the last line is a basic cautious inequality, and we need to provide a bound for the term LJ of the capital I. By definition, it is like this form. That is actually the mm -hmm. count of visit to SEH uh, in the JS batch of the true trajectory. Since each batch is the JS batch contains uh, contains at most two to the JS two to the power of J minus one samples. So LJ of capital I is at most two to the power of J minus one. Mm -hmm. So this is by the definition of this random variable. Uh, this is random variable. Uh, this is the profile. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Finally, we get the desired bound of this term. And that is a t arrow equals t arrow of capital I, as small than squared b prime. B prime is a uh, you can roughly view it as s e h square plus log uh, one over delta prime, and times the total variance term. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, this term is if you uh, now now we can omit the log one or the the prime term since the, uh, we have finished all our union bond argument. So here, b a prime is roughly o q tau of s e h, and this term is s e h square. And uh, using similar techniques, we can bond the total variance by key key h square. So that oh. this. This term is SEH and KH squared. The total uh, regular bond is squared SEH cube times K and plus SEH squared. And take minimization with uh, KH, we can eliminate the second order term. So there, are, uh, so for the bond of the variance, total variance term, uh, there is a, some similar arguments uh, to play for the uh, T error prime, which is has had this form, which uh -huh. is also an error uh -huh. times some vector depends on the samples after the H layer, where x h plus one k you can take values of uh, plus minus v h k or v h k square. Yeah. So here there is still some details, some dirty work. Uh, we will refer to some previous model based work. Yeah. Uh. So I think I have finished the technical technical part. So here is some future directions, which I think is very challenging. So the first uh, direction is to study the same problem beyond the timely homogeneous MDPs. So in this work, our decoupling arguments work because uh, the structure of the final hard MDP is very is very simple. So the samples after the edge layer. Is clearly decoupled from the samples before the edge layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for time homogeneous MDP and discounted MDP, their argument does not work. We need some, I think we need some more efforts to establish new decoupling arguments. And the more challenging problem is that uh, it, it is possible to prove a horizon free uh, regular bound without the order term. That is a uh, I think I have mentioned that MVP uh, achieved achieved a regular bound of squared S A K plus S square A. So how to eliminate the second order term S square A? Uh, that is also an interesting problem. A second problem, second direction is to study model free algorithms. So here in this work, we play a model based algorithm and decouple uh, the random variables using. Uh, Using some uh, using the gener the generative federations, but in model free algorithms, uh, basically we we think that the value function and the empirical transitions are naturally coupled, but some initial samples has to be west has to be wasted. So how to avoid this wasting of samples? It is another is another very interesting problem. Uh, all right, I think I have finished all the five parts. So thank you for listening. Thank you.
Yeah, let's open the floor for questions. So if anyone has any questions, either type or just raise hand and then you can go. I had uh, some questions. Um, so have you started to, to think about, uh, I'm interested in the time homogeneous uh, case, like how things could uh, work out there? Yeah, I have tried some, I have given some efforts to that case, but that is, uh, that's because they, they uh, let me come, let me come to the size. Uh -huh. So, uh, before we define this function, so in the time homogeneous case, they, uh, the, the value function depends on all, depends on the whole transition property model. Mm -hmm. So there is some, there is no structure of layers. So it, it depends on all the values of empirical uh, of P for every SA. So now you cannot decouple from decouple uh, these two random variables from the view of uh, profile. I think I have tried, I have given some try, but failed. So uh, I worked on the all possible choices of the value function. So mm -hmm. you can, in the optimistic planning and the op optimistic uh, reference learning framework, you can find that the value function is, is not increasing in K, some similar mm -hmm. properties. So play optimistic, always mm -hmm. take the minimization. So with, the, with this property, you can build an epsilon net for the all possible choices of the value function. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so along that, along this idea, uh, Try to uh, try to use some uni union bound over all possible choices of the value function right. to yeah. on this term. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe the algorithm needs to be modified to um, to deal with. Like here, you're also modifying the algorithm to break some correlations, which is another question. Uh, do you think that the unmodified algorithm? Uh, would have verse sample complexity versus case sample complexity. So is this uh, modification really necessary or is it an artifact of the proof technique that we are using? You mean model free algorithm, right? No, no, no. It's just like uh, without the doubling. All right, without doubling, right? Yeah, you, uh, can't, you can't get the same bounds with this technique. Uh, but uh, I don't know whether it's an artifact of the analysis or is it a real, a real effect. Uh, let, let, let me give it a try. Mm. Uh, yes, I believe I can. We can get a Samson. Yes, 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 we can. We can get, but we have to pay a factor of log k, an additional factor of log k, since there are possibly. Okay. So let's come come to this. Maybe come to this 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 this, this inequality. Yeah. Uh, so it's considerations. So, uh, here. so you would basically say that uh, so during a period of doubling, things do not change drastically. So you pay a little price, but you can reduce that analysis. Yeah, I, I the believe, analysis you were doing here. I believe the things work here. Uh, Is that oh. true? Uh, I, I, I'm not, not very sure now. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not very sure now. So uh, there are some technical issues in the in, the, in bounding this term, in bounding this, in bounding uh, this term. So the weight has to be adjusted. I, I don't know whether uh, the trajectory uh, may can influence may can influence over the weight. I'm not. I'm not sure, but I can give it a try. This is possible. Anyway, interesting. Uh... So I think uh, Kambak Eskandari has raised his hand uh, or her. Do you, do you want to ask your question, Kambak? Uh, hi, yeah. Um, thank you for the presentation. It was really informative. Uh, my question is kind of related to future work. So um, have you ever considered working on the robustness of your um, model for sample complexity of online reinforcement learning? Uh, uh... 
hard to say. Uh, this I think this work is basically on the theoretical, theoretical side. Uh, and I, I, I'm not aware how to apply it on some basic settings such as uh, robot, robotics. I, I think no, no, no. I think it's robustness. Robustness is the question. Uh, yes, yes. Robust the robustness of. Uh, uh, Kambach, what do you mean by robustness here? Oh, sorry. So, <laughs> uh, so we might right. have some value function uh, yeah. that yeah. by like for with that, the right. conditions of the environment and. It might cut, might lead to the value function to be minimized, and we want to maximize our value function. Uh, you I, mean, or the robustness? You mean the model might be corrupted? Yeah, yeah. maybe. So uh, we might we want to maximize the minimization of our value function. Maybe there is an adversary that's kind of. Well, the worst I don't know. I don't know, during the online learning. Yeah, that, that is this model where people are looking oh. at it, I guess. In the poly or the worst problem, uh, as, as far as I see, uh, for the or the worst problem, if, if that is the case, it is uh, basically the algorithm has an uh, second order dependence, uh, squared s square a h cube uh, in the leading term. So, it will be an interesting problem, but very hard, I believe. So the arguments here, uh, I believe the arguments here can help you. Uh, so the bus will care where the data set cannot be drawn in preference in advance. So there, there is some dynamics in the data sets. But I, I think we have to uh, we have to separate the randomness and the the virtual dynamics of the data set. So I, I believe I, similar arguments can work if you can separate the two things. Mm. OK, interesting. Yeah, good. Come back. Are you happy? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. um, any other questions? I think we can take it offline. I stop the recording and then. Uh, we can have some off 